please welcome Chairman of Cleveland Clinic's Cole Eye Institute, Dr. Dan Martin. Thank you. Good afternoon. I, I spent the first 15 years of my career at Emory University in Atlanta until I was recruited to the Cleveland Clinic 10 years ago. What convinced me to come here was the belief that this organization could do things that few of the places could do, that we had the culture, the talent, the organizational structure, much like what Tom uh, just described to you, to do things that no one else could do. Ten years later, I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that that is very much true. What I'd like to do is to share with you over the next few minutes some of the accomplishments that have been achieved at the Coal Eye Institute and to explain why it's become so important to expand our facility. The story of coal over the last 10 years has been one of unprecedented growth. In 2009, we had our main campus facility and three satellite offices. By, by 2019, we'd expanded to over 28 locations and now cover most of Northeast Ohio. 10 years ago, we served 130,000 patients each year. Last year, we served 310,000. We performed 5,000 surgeries in 2008 and have grown to 16,000 surgeries in 2018. Our staff has grown from 30 to almost 100. And along the way, we've, we've assembled an amazing team of people, clinicians, scientists, surgeons, who are committed to not only delivering the best eye care possible, but also advancing the next generation of therapies. There's no better example of that, of what we, our team has been able to accomplish at Cole, than what we've been able to do with age-related macular degeneration. AMD is the leading cause of legal blindness worldwide. At one point, at some point, 25% of you will see downtown Cleveland like this. It's one in four. For many years, this was permanent and progressive until we discovered a new class of compounds that can stop this disease. It can also reverse some of the vision loss that has transpired. Today, we've reduced the rate of legal blindness from 90% to 10%. It's a stunning change. It's one of the great scientific stories in medicine. And the Cole Eye Institute played a major, major leadership role. We treated the first person in the world with any of these drugs. We led, played a leadership role in almost every clinical trial that was performed, if not the pivotal role that led to the availability of these drugs and defined how we use them. Unfortunately, these are treatments and not cures. And to be effective, they have to be injected directly into the eye. Sorry, it sounds creepy. It's really not as bad as you think. For these things to be effective, oftentimes for the patients, for the, for the rest of the patient's life. This has had a profound impact on, obviously, our, our patients, both from an outcome standpoint, but in terms of how often they have to see us, the treatment burden, and the cost. At present, we performed, we went from doing rare intravitreal injections each year. Last year, 25 million were performed worldwide. It's the fastest growing procedure in the history of US medicine. It consumes 10% of the entire Medicare Part B drug budget, and that's just to treat one disease in the eye. We have a team of scientists at Cole that are developing the next generation of therapies, looking at drugs that last longer, sustained release drug delivery, and gene therapy that will hopefully reduce the treatment burden for our patients and at the same time reduce cost. The leading cause of blindness in babies is called retinopathy of prematurity. ROP blinds 100,000 infants every year worldwide. And at Cole, we think we've discovered the cure, not a treatment. We think we've discovered the cure for this disease and are developing a program to hopefully eradicate this condition from the planet. One of our marquee programs at Cole, both clinically and in research, is the development of next generation imaging and ophthalmology. We have a, this program has grown from one or two scientists and clinicians who had an interest in it, so now half of our department is involved in this in some capacity. We've generated state-of-the-art image-guided surgery that now lets us see three-dimensionally as we do complex retinal procedures. 
in conjunction with the Neurological Institute, we're looking for biomarkers for neurological disease. The eye is a direct extension of the brain. It's the one place that you can look in and see a part of the brain and image it at a very high resolution. And already we've identified potential biomarkers for Alzheimer's and multiple sclerosis. And then perhaps the, the biggest area in imaging is the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning to augment and add precision to our diagnostic capabilities. We have a robust program in regenerative medicine, ranging from the study of zebrafish to the study of stem cells to the use of the bionic eye. Many people have asked me, why are you looking at zebrafish? Because it's the only species on the planet that can grow a new retina when it's damaged. They actually, we have the same genes that they do. They know how to turn theirs on, we don't. And if you can ever figure out how to turn that process on, it would have extraordinary therapeutic potential. The bionic, the so-called bionic eye was a breakthrough therapy. It hit the scene about five years ago. This very complicated procedure is now performed at Cole Eye Institute more than any other place in the United States. You can take a patient who is totally blind and give them some sight back through this device. As you can see, all of these programs in clinical and research are highly integrated. And in fact, they inform each, each other. Most people assume that you start in the lab and you bring that into the clinic. Sometimes it goes the other way. You start in the clinic and tells you, geez, I should be looking at this in the lab. We have completely run out of space, not only for the clinical and research programs that we want to accomplish, but simply to serve the patients we have. If you recall the, the, the growth curves I showed you just a few minutes ago, those slopes haven't changed for the last 10 years, and they're not going to, not if I have anything to do with it. And so it's become imperative that we go ahead and expand the Cole Eye Institute. This is, uh, just for orientation purposes, this is uh, the east end of the Crown Mall. This is Tossick on the left. We're going to build a new building in front of the existing uh, Cole Eye Institute. The massing will be roughly similar to Tossick, a little smaller, sort of the little sister of Tossick, if you will. You'll probably enter off of East 105th Street, and when you do, you'll walk into a glass atrium that will run the spine between the old building and the new one, but connecting them and allow it to function as a completely integrated facility. This is not just the building of a new building, it's also a renovation of what we have. Our existing building was built in 1999. It was built for 1990s medicine, and because of so many changes, um, it's, it's very clear to us that the flow and the patient experience can be vastly improved. So we're completely redesigning the whole thing, the old building and the new building and the renovation that we do to augment the patient experience and to facilitate the growth in our research and our educational programs. Many of you have already contributed to our building campaign and to our programs. I cannot thank you enough. Your philanthropic support is what has gotten us to this point, and I thank you again for your commitment. But I'm hoping that many more of you will join us because we have so much more to do as we plan for and build the programs that hopefully will lead to outstanding eye care services and discovery of the next generation of cures for blinding diseases in the 21st century. Thank you very much.